For the last year or so, I have had the privilege of working on the brand newly launched AWS Amplify Studio, which just launched at reInvent. And in this tutorial, I want to show you how to build an application in Figma, then import it to React components that are cloud connected, meaning that you can connect to your Amplify based data using them. So I'm going to take you through how to create a blog app with Amplify Studio. We'll go ahead and start by clicking new app and we'll do build an app. I can choose an app name. So I'll go with Amplify Studio demo. And then this will take a few minutes to deploy. I'll go ahead and launch Studio once it deploys. And now I'm going to go ahead and create a data model. So I'll go into set up data here and add model. So I'm creating a blog, so I'll have a post. I'll keep that ID there. I'll also have a title, which is going to be a string field, an author, which will also be a string. And I'm actually gonna make these things required. So I will click is required on title and under author, I'll do is required as well. Then I need to have content, the text of that blog post, and I'll also want to have an image, which will be a URL. So I'll use images that are on Unsplash and I'll just link the URL within here. That being said, we do have a developer preview for storage within Amplify Studio, so you might wanna check that out. I'll go ahead and deploy that schema. I can also create more complex data models as well. So if I had multiple models and relationships, I could very much model that as well. Now that my data model has deployed, I'm gonna go over to the content tab and I'm going to create some seed data. I will auto generate this data and I'm gonna create 10 different rows of data. I'll add some constraints to my data too. So my title, for example, I will do sentence length and I'll have it in between five and 12. I'll also add a constraint for author, and that will be a full name. Then my content is going to be paragraph length, and that will be in between two and four. We'll have short blog posts on this site. Then I'll do image, and I'll do a URL length, and that'll be just random. So I'll go ahead and generate the data. Now I'm gonna go to unsplash.com and grab some images to use as my covers for my blog posts. So I'll paste in these image URLs. I'll just do the first three, but you could go through and do the rest as well. Okay, now here comes the fun part. I am going to go ahead and think about my user interface now that I have my backend data built out. So I'm gonna go into UI library and this is in developer preview. So it is new in my experience, it works really well, but you just might wanna think about it before using this in a production app right now though the general availability is coming. So I'm gonna go ahead and click get started and it's going to link to this Figma template. So I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this and you'll see that there are a couple of tabs. There's primitives, which are what they sound like, they're primitive components. So things like buttons and different fields and alerts and different permutations of those. There's also the my components tab. There's also this components tab, so you can edit these to be whatever you want them to be. So I'm gonna go into this social A card right here, and I'm going to make some updates. So I'll go ahead and bold some of this text. So the Nikhil S. 2nd, November, or 2nd of December, 2021, I'm gonna go ahead and bold that. Then I'm also going to remove the background color just so I could put it on a different background if I wanted to. 
Once I'm done, I'm going to copy and paste this Figma URL, paste it right in here, and then that's going to import my Figma components. Now there is this approval process. So you can view your components. You can also see the different modes as well, so dark and light mode, and then you can accept or reject them. So I'll go ahead and do accept all, but I could do them one at a time if I wanted to. Now all of my components are linked in and I can view my different components. So you'll see that the one that I updated has that bold text and the removed background color. I'm going to go ahead and now click configure. Now I'm going to connect my data to this UI component. So I'll add a prop in and it'll be my post. I'll then choose my post model here. Then I need to set the prop on the element. So I'll do label for this title here, and then I'll do post.title. And you can see that it changed to my <laughs> auto-generated ones. Then I'm going to do the image. So I'll do image source, and I'll do post.image. I'll do the same with the content. I'll set the label to be the post content. This will be the post author. And I'll set this to be the created at. Now I can shuffle through the preview data to see the ones with my actual images. <laughs> You'll see them flashing in here. So that one has my, my actual picture there. So instead of just wanting to show one blog post, I want to show all of them. So I'm going to create a collection here and I'll call this my post collection. Within here, I can change all sorts of things about my components. I can change the direction that the collection goes in. I can make it into a grid instead. I can also add padding. I can also add filters. So we could make it so that only blog posts with a published flag, for example, are rendered on this collection. All sorts of things like that. You could also sort by the created at, which is a good thing to do. And we'll do that descending. So the newest posts are first. Okay, now I need to get this into my React app. So I'm going to go ahead and create a fresh React app. Then I'll change into the directory that I created. In here, I'll go ahead and install the Amplify libraries and React components. And that goes off the page, but it's AWS Amplify UI React. Now I need to get this app synced locally. If you don't have the Amplify command line interface installed, you'll need to do that. And once you do that, then you'll need to run Amplify pull with your app ID. So you can click the local setup instructions and it'll give you the command to copy and paste into your own code. And you do want to log into the Amplify CLI. So I'll say yes here. I'll choose my default editor, JavaScript, React, and then source build. I'll say yes to planning on modifying the back end. Now I'll go ahead and open this up in my text editor. You can see that upon running Amplify pull, several directories were code generated. So I have this Amplify backend directory with all sorts of information about my API. You can dig into that if you're interested. You can also update your API within there and run Amplify push so that you don't need to go back into Studio. And then there's also the models and UI components. These are the TypeScript versions of your models. So I have the posts. And then the UI components are the React code for my components. And you can see that they look like normal React. They do take a lot of props so that they can be manipulated and they can also be overridden as well. So you can see that there. So now let's go ahead and add these components to our app. 
So I'm gonna open up the index.js first and I'm going to configure Amplify. So I need three lines of code for this. Import config from AWS exports. That's this file right here that's get ignored. It's grayed out. It just has information about where your API is and things like that. Then I'm also importing Amplify from AWS Amplify, and this is the Amplify library. So I'm going to do amplify.configure, configures the method on Amplify with that configuration object. I'm also going to go ahead and import the Amplify CSS file. So if I do import AWS Amplify UI React Styles.css, that will apply the Amplify CSS file for my project. And I'm also going to import the Amplify provider component. This is similar to other UI libraries that you may have used, but it adds a top level component that everything that's a child of it will have the styling applied. So I'll go ahead and use the Amplify provider component and wrap my whole app in it. Now I need to add my blog collection to the page. So I'm going to go into my app.js file here. So I'll import that post collection. So I'm going to import my post collection from my post collection file, and then I'll clear out all this other stuff and just render that. Now I'll run my React server. And you can see that my components rendered on the page. The one quick thing that I need to do is add in a font file. So I'll go into my index.css and add in the import to the inter font, which is the default one used by Amplify. And then you can see that all of my fonts smooth out and look much prettier. You can see my ones with images did show up. Too funny. Also, if you want to look at the documentation for any of this, you can go to ui.docs.amplify.ews, and this will show you all sorts of things like theming, which I won't even go over in this tutorial, but you can add different UI themes. You can also read a lot of information about the different primitive components. So I can see information, for example, on my collection component, so one thing that I can do is make it paginated. So I'll go ahead and go back to my app here and say is paginated items per page equals three. And now you can see that there are three items per page and I can move from page to page. In addition, sometimes I'll want to update the child component. So the post collection is a collection of these social A components. And within the social A component, it's made up of flex components and text components and images and all those sorts of things. So sometimes I'll want to update those child components. The UI components directory is managed by Amplify. So if I rerun Amplify pull, this directory will be overwritten with my changes. And so I don't wanna put a ton of effort into updating these, then have it be all overwritten. Two ways to combat this, I can either drag one of these files out and make it so it's not managed by Amplify anymore. But that makes it so that I can't update my components through Amplify. I can also use overrides though, in order to do this in my own code. So I can pass in an overrides object. And then the key for anything that I want to override will be the key within this overrides function here. So I can look up the override for anything there. So the first thing that I want to do is the collection that social a zero because this will allow me to update that social a component that's inside the collection component but inside of there i want to pass another overrides prop and i'll do flex flex one text zero and i'll do as a 
to make it into an A tag instead of hard coded text, and then an href. And I'll just do a placeholder URL console.ews.amplify.com. So now if I click into the read more, it takes me to the AWS console. This is fully integrated into the rest of the Amplify ecosystem. So if I want, I can go into authentication within Studio, enable authentication, and then use the with authenticator component for authentication. And you can read more about that component right here. You can also theme your UI. There is a Figma plugin that allows you to update the theme of your components using this editor. So you can change things like color universally to all your components using this. If at any point you want to update your component, you can do so within Figma. And then within the UI library tab, you can click sync with Figma and it'll import all of those changes. So head to the AWS console or the Amplify Sandbox at sandbox.amplifyapp.com in order to create your own application. And I'd love to see what you end up building. So if you have any feedback, feel free to message me on Twitter or leave a comment down below. Again, I work on this product all day, every day. So I'll definitely be able to forward your feedback on to the PMs and engineers working on this. Thanks so much for watching and subscribe so that you can see my next video.